Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Terence goes further into hyperbolic functions, and I'll look further at the catenary and go over example one of the example series. And uh, yeah, before I get into it, I want to make a brief point that uh, uh, yeah, to make sure to check out my Reddit and vote uh, math forums or subreddits and subverse. Uh, and you can check out on Reddit, it's going to be reddit.com slash r slash amazing math stuff and votes is uh, vote.co slash v slash amazing math stuff and basically you can go there and uh, yeah post whatever math or science related stuff you have. I made these because uh, the other science and math threads were very strict on what you can post and it seemed to be just very uh, specific topics and groups of people such as for math it's usually just people looking for math help or just some random stuff like that. This one post whatever, whatever cool math or science stuff you have. Yeah, so check it out. So um, let's just jump into the example. This is from my calculus book. Uh, I want to make a brief point again. So my calculus book doesn't uh, derive the formula for a catenary, but it does have a, an example that uses a reverse derivation to prove it, that it is in fact correct. So using the principles from physics as shown in my previous video, so make sure to watch out, it can be shown that when a cable is hung between two poles, it, it takes the shape of a curve y equals f, f of x. That satisfies the differential equation and is known as a cat catenary or catenary. Uh, I'm not sure which one's the correct pronunciation. Let me know which one you prefer. Uh, and uh, so we have this one right here, the differential equation dy d squared y over dx uh, squared. This is second derivative equals to uh, rho times g over t square root 1 plus dy over dx squared where rho is the linear mass density of the cable, mass per unit length. In my earlier video I used uh, weight density. And g is the acceleration due to gravity. And t is the tension in the cable at its lowest point. And recall that I used t naught or t zero for that. And I just t was just a generic one. But anyways, in this, in this example, t is the tension at the lowest point. So assuming the coordinate system is chosen appropriately, i.e. the lowest point crosses the y-axis, this is just an intercept, verify that the following function is a solution of the above differential equation here, y equals fx, uh, t over rho g, and this is cosh or hyperbolic cosine, p, I mean rho g x over t. So yeah, this is just used as a reverse uh, proof. Uh, of this uh, cat catenary function. Yeah, so first I want to uh, point out, well, recall from my earlier video, recall from my last video that I went over the uh, proof of the catenary, but I used it slightly different uh, terms. So d squared this is the differential equation that I derived, uh, d squared y uh, over dx squared or the second root of equals to a times s where where a the variable was defined as uh, this was this was uh, just used as weight density over uh, t0 and then this was just the arc length of the segment that I use 1 plus dy over dx uh, squared like that and I want to point out again the weight. Uh, this was the the linear density I used, but this was a weight density. This was weight over uh, unit length, like that. Where weight is just yeah, recall weight is just mass times it by gravity, like that. And then you have our over unit length, like that. And then we have this mass per uh, unit length, like this. We just hover around that. This part is just our rho in this case. That's just mass per unit length. So this is rho and that's gravity, uh, acceleration due to gravity. So we can just go with well, rho times it by g. So yeah, I just wanted to point out the difference. This is the only difference uh, w uh, not replace out with rho g and t o in, in my early video. Again, this is the uh, tension at lowest point or at the, uh, the lowest point of the catenary like that at lowest point. That's what I used. And then this is uh, equal to t in uh, this case, in this video's case. Even though I had t a different uh, meaning in that earlier video. Yeah, so thus, uh, even from our earlier video, just switch up the variables, we're going to get the exact same as differential equation in this video. So d squared 
This is dy uh, dx like that. Second derivative uh, in Lebanese notation. Now this w0 is going to be rho g and then the t0 is going to be t and then we have this uh, square root 1 plus dy over dx squared. Yeah, so we have this part right here, rho, g, and there's differential equation exactly the same as this one. Same thing that I used over here. Yeah, so now let's go and prove this. One way of doing it, well, what we, what we can do is this is d squared y over dx. There's a second derivative and there's a first derivative. Well, let's just take the derivative of this right here. So we know that y, well we're given that y equals to t over rho g, rho g and then that's cosh or hyperbolic cosine, so cosh and what is that, pgx like that over t and again I've already proved this in my last video but here we're just doing a reverse uh, proof that my caucus book uses. Yes, yeah, so to solve this, first thing what we're going to do is, well, recall from my earlier video, I think a few years back, that I proved that, or I showed that the derivative d over dx of cosh, this is equal to, yeah, cosh x, this is equal to, or the hyperbolic cosine, is just going to be equal to hyperbolic sine or sinh of x. I think that's how you call it. So yeah, I'll just put a, another arrow like that. And also, we're going to have to use this for the second derivative. This is going to go to this. And then we need to do the second derivative, d over dx of sinh, or hyperbolic so cosine. And I also showed that this one's equal to just uh, hyperbolic cosine of h. So it's just, uh, they're just related like that. The derivative of cosine, you, know, you get the sine. Derivative of sine, you get the cosine. Similar to uh, trig, except derivative of just basic cosine function gets to negative sine function. It's the only difference. But yeah, the derivative of a uh, sine function is just going to be positive cosine. So we have this. So let's take that derivative and y prime equals to dy over dx. This equals to, yeah, equals to, well, we'll just write t rho g. These are just constants. They don't change anything. We just put that down. Derivative of cos cosine or cosh is going to be sinh like that hyperbolic sine and then we have rho g x over t and then there's a constant in front of it so we use the chain rule take the derivative inside of this so we just take the derivative inside this that's just going to be well rho g over t because that's just going to go to one like that so notice what happens here this cancels with this and this cancels with this so we have a y prime or I'll just write uh, dy over dx equals to this right here, x over t, so cinch like that. So we have this part. Now to prove that this equals to this, what we could do is, well, we can get the second derivative, and then we can also do the d derivative, put a square root, a square root out of 1, do this whole thing, and see if the left-hand side equals to the right and side like that. Yes, yeah, so so that's what we're going to do. Uh, check if uh, yeah, check yes, check if left hand side equals right hand side. So let's try to do that. So left hand side equals to dy uh, d, d squared y squared. This is second derivative like that of dx squared. Uh, the root of this one, that's just going to be, well, cosh, cosh x. This will be like this. Pgx, and then again, chain rule, multiply that out. And I'll put that in front just to be constant. Like that, pg over t. All right, so this is the left-hand side. Now let's check if the right-hand side is equal. So the right-hand side equals to... Well, we're given is going to be this whole thing there. Yeah, pg over t square root 1 plus dy over dx squared. And that's written down right here. So pg over t. Yeah, so just write that down. I mean, rho g 
over t square root 1 plus dy over dx squared like that and we have our dy over dx is right here so let's just plug that inside and that's going to be cinch pg or rho g x this equals to rho g over t square root square root like that 1 plus and then cinch uh, rho g x over t and this is yet yeah, squared like that so we have this but now also recall from my earlier video on hyperbolic trig identity hyperbolic trig yeah, identity that I proved in my earlier videos one of the basic ones where which was and it shows how it's hyperbolic cosine or cos uh, squared x minus co uh, cinch hyperbolic cosine squared x like this minus hyperbolic sine squared yeah hyperbolic sine squared of x equals to one so this is the uh, famous hyperbolic or the uh, the basic uh, trig identity for that so we have this but this one's a plus one there and it's a giant square root so we can move this over there so thus if we move that over there we get a one plus uh, hyperbolic cosine I mean hyperbolic sine of h equals to cosh squared of x so thus in our case because we're going to move that x it's not going to be x it's going to be pgx or rho gx uh, divided by t so in our case what we have is yeah is we're going to have this equals to cosh squared of rho gx over t that's because we have this replace that x with this and now this equals to because now we move that over so we have one plus um, hyperbolic cinch like this squared of rho g x over t like that and what we could do is well square root so we get that square there I um, mean the square root sign so we square root both sides and what we end up getting is this uh, that two gets removed so we have cosh um, cosh pg rho g x over t equals to plus or minus like this because if we remove that square it could be plus or minus one plus uh, cinch squared pg x over t like that Just move this over but also note we're going to take up only the positive side here because we have a square root here so this square root is always going to be greater than or equal to zero you can't have a negative there for any real number and this is uh, because square root of any number is going to be greater than or equal to zero for real numbers. Yeah, so hence we'll just take a positive cosine or cosh h like that and then throw that inside here and then what we end up getting is now our yeah, so now what we get is our right hand side equals to rho g over t and now this whole thing is cosh pg x or rho g uh, x over t like this so yeah that's what the right hand side equals to and now if we check the left hand side we have rho g over t cosh pg or rho g x over t exactly exactly the same thing this equals to left hand side so that's what we have we've proven it so left hand side equals to right hand side. So yeah, now that left hand side equals right hand side, that's check mark and that's the proof that uh, yeah, that, that's all the, the proof that this solution, y equals t over pg cosh pg over x, no, pg x over t is the differential uh, yeah, is the solution to this uh, differential, um, differential equation over there. So that's what we just proved. Is when you take the derivative, put that, throw that inside both sides, and that's what you get. Anyway, that's all for you. If you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, as well as, as well as viewing these notes on Steemit. I'll be uploading those shortly after I upload this video. Also, check out uh, my Reddit and vote sub uh, Reddit and subverse or subvote. Anyway, that's all for today. If you learned, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.